In an extremely hectic season that culminated in a near fight between teammates and broken hand in the tunnel, one of the few bright spots for this year's Minnesota Timberwolves has been the continued development of 22-year-old forward Jaden McDaniels. In just his third season, he showed major signs of growth on both ends of the floor and may be in line to receive his first of many all-defensive honors. McDaniels has a unique set of physical tools that leave him capable of guarding almost anyone. He's got the size of a forward, standing 6'9 with a lengthy 7 foot wingspan, but he's real agile on his feet, almost like a supersized guard out there with how well he moves laterally. He can also change speeds at a real high level, shifting his momentum to stick with quick changes of direction, and his hips are incredibly flexible, allowing him to swivel and reposition his body to close off attack angles. After cutting off these pathways, he does a great job of using his lower body and core to absorb contact and remain in guarding position. Here he chases Clay around a pin down and off the three point line before peeling into a switch, where he slides into that driving lane and absorbs the shoulder while making a play on the ball. His body control and balance in these spots are unreal. All of his momentum is going towards the basket in an attempt to take away Kaminga's runway, and even after being bumped off his spot, he's able to explode off the floor and alter the finish in mid-air. That speed at which he gets off the floor and completely vertical makes it really tough on finishers. He's usually able to keep slashers in front of him and just swarms those attempts with his length. Notice the agile hip swivel to stay in front of his man as he crosses over, forcing him to pick up his dribble and not falling for a series of up fakes as he sends away a shot attempt. And on the second chance opportunity, it's the exact same result. Even when players do get the step, he can still alter these looks with some great contests down low. And if he's bumped off his spot while in a backpedal, he does a great job of attacking the ball to still make plays. You'll see the same sort of things on the perimeter. It's really hard to shoot the ball over him because of his timing and length when contesting, while it's just as difficult to create any sort of separation. Dame first looks to drive, but McDaniels absorbs the contact and slams the brakes to hold his position. So Lillard counters with a deep sidestep three, only for Jaden to perfectly time and get a hand on it. At times, I do think he can get a bit overly aggressive though, initiating too much contact with his core when pressuring the ball, or doing too much with his hands, pushing or holding offensive players, which results in some pretty high foul rates. He's actually fourth in the NBA at about three and a half fouls a game, the most of any non-big man, and this is something I think he can work on and improve with age, cutting out some of these errors and becoming a bit more disciplined. Still, because of his physical makeup, he's one of the game's most switchable man defenders. There's not really any worry about him, regardless of which position he's defending. Holding his own against shifty ball handlers, bigger, more powerful perimeter creators, and occasionally even switching into the post when needed, just offering so much flexibility for any squad to work with. Primarily though, he's spending most of his time at the point of attack, bothering opposing team's primary ball handlers. He's an elite on-ball defender, playing with real high pressure as he picks up guys from half court or even beyond that, and because of his mobility, is able to stick with quicker players every step of the way. He plays with real active hands in these spots, often taking away the most routine passes, so at times it feels like he's just holding offensive players in a jail cell, and when a big comes to provide help with a screen, he'll just act as if they don't even exist. His ability to navigate screens at that size is second to none, knowing exactly which angles to choose and getting skinny when needed to either cut off attack angles or stay attached to handlers. He shows impressive matchup recognition, knowing which offensive players to chase over screens or go under to concede lower percentage shots, and he's great at positioning himself in a way that dictates where they go. Notice how he opens up his hips, giving Ja the middle of the floor where Gobert is in position to take away a drive, and when he takes the bait, McDaniels avoids Clark as if he's not even there to send away a pull-up jumper. 
This time he's looking to force Maxi wide, where Reed is at the level to offer help, but when Tyrese instead rejects it, Jaden quickly changes directions to not get blown by and gets a hand on the floater. By guiding offensive players around screens, this sometimes means giving up a step or getting put in jail, and he's really good at playing on the hip or on players' backside by staying attached and altering their movements with his length. Here he opens up the wing as to not give up the middle of the floor, and although Jaw's able to get by him, help is there to contain the drive just long enough for him to erase a shot attempt down low. Because he's so good at dodging screens, he's also capable of playing the role of an off-ball chaser. He's agile enough to stay attached to off-ball movers at all times, and plays with active hands, generating a decent amount of turnovers on players looking to get the ball off of screens. And even if those passes do get through, good luck shooting over him. It's not just as a man defender where he's making his impact felt though. Away from the ball, he's a real active helper. Because he's such a rangy athlete, he's able to cover a lot of ground, and when rotating down low, he offers legit rim protection. I briefly mentioned how quickly he gets off the floor, which allows him to serve as a real vertical presence off of two feet. This is stuff you would see from a high level shot blocker, positioned in the dunker spot where in one motion he hops into a leap to send away a layup as it's released. Over the last two seasons, players are shooting more than 9% below their expected field goal percentage at the rim when he's contesting, good for the 96th percentile among all players, and because he's capable of altering these shots at such a high level, he adds a ton of value on the back line. Minnesota plays an aggressive coverage in the pick and roll, which gives up a slip to the big, but McDaniels is there to drop from the corner and offer a real strong line of defense. Here it is again, except this time Wood makes the extra pass to Luka in the corner, only for Jaden to recover with that mobility, contain him off the catch, and time a contest on a step back three. He's also a really strong helper at the nail, turning away drives with active movement and sharp hands. As Booker looks to drive off the catch, McDaniel slides way over to the middle, which forces him to pick up his dribble, while still remaining in position to take away a backdoor cut with his length. This time, his man is at the top of the key, and notice he constantly hops up and down to keep his feet active and ready to pounce, following the ball into a spot where he can take away a kick out to the corner. He's not necessarily a guy who's actively looking to jump lanes like this, or anticipating passes at a super high level, but is agile enough that when paired with his length and activity, will make some plays on the ball. Sometimes he can be a bit too infatuated with making a play though, having his lapses as he loses his man on occasion, but even when he makes these mistakes, his tools help him a ton on the recovery. In semi-transition, he falls asleep for a split second as his man backdoors, but is still able to get a hand in the passing lane. This time when his man cuts, he's a full two steps ahead as he catches the ball in the paint in stride yet McDaniels just teleports to the rim for a chase down block, and you'll see these same sort of recovery skills playing a big role in transition. Because of his unique set of skills, he can even defend the pick and roll and execute tons of different coverages as a big man. Of course, he can seamlessly switch on to virtually any ball handler without giving up any sort of advantage, but he can also drop back and offer resistance in the paint. Here he's anticipating a switch, but Reed stays up high, which opens up a slip to Okongwu, but as I just talked about, McDaniels is never really out of a play. You'll see the same thing when he's hedging, playing high enough to make Ross pick up his dribble and hit the roller, and rotating right back to his man to take away a finish. Overall, what you're left with is a defender who appears to be made in a lab, having the build of a modern day four with the ability to execute things that a secondary rim protector would do, but moving so extraordinarily well on the perimeter that he's simultaneously one of the game's very best defenders at the point of attack. And it's that versatility, especially in the modern era, that has rightfully earned him so much buzz. It's not just that end of the floor that people are really excited about though. 
some of the flashes he's shown on offense are truly impressive. But before we get into that, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics to further guide your understanding of the sport. They offer talent grades on any aspect you can think of, and through their player profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using Jaden's perimeter defense as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to lock down, along with how he stacks up against his peers. By signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription, so I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested. And with that being said, let's take a quick look at McDaniel's game on the offensive side of the ball. He spends a large majority of his time spotting up, most commonly in the corner, where he's turned himself into a pretty effective three-point shooter. Since entering the league, he's hit 40% of his wide open threes, meaning he's not a guy who can just be left alone or helped off of with ease, and he pairs that with some pretty sharp cutting, along with high feel movement as an operator on the baseline. What really stands out though, is what he's shown to be capable of doing after the catch, as he attacks closeouts or disadvantaged defenses. He doesn't have a sharp enough handle to consistently create from a standstill, but when defenses are put into rotation, his length and athleticism help him get to the rim, where he's a good finisher. He can score through contact, on the floor or in mid-air, and has even made some nice reads as a downhill playmaker. The big one though, is the self-creation flashes he's shown as a mid-range scorer. These aren't called on at volume, but in tight possessions or at the end of the shot clock are a real option to fall back on. Because of his length, he can get the ball up over contests, and is already comfortably getting into his jumpers off the dribble in a multitude of ways, including out of step backs, hanging hesitation dribbles, quick triggers after crossovers, or just pull-ups with momentum going towards the cup. And he's had some nights where his shot making looks to be pretty next level. It's not yet a consistent product, but if he can get to a point where he's a legit tertiary creator and massive threat to attack rotating defenses as both a play finisher and connector at multiple levels, we're talking about a pretty strong value add to great team offenses with that all-league caliber defense, which makes him one of the game's most intriguing young players. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of McDaniels and just how good you believe he is. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.